Hello my friends and welcome back to EVE Online with me Mark from DadX and we're going to start today with Erica Erica in her Thrasher. She's got us an escalation, a 5 out of 10 Angels escalation, the Angels Red Light District here in High Sec, which is quite rare. And there's only just under 3 hours left on the counter and I wasn't going to get this escalation done but some time kind of cropped up so I thought I'd give it a go. The problem is that Erica can't possibly do a 5 out of 10 yet. She's just not equipped. She can fly a, a battle cruiser just about. Now you've seen me do the Serpentis 5 out of 10 in a Drake. And I talked you through the site there. And uh, the way that you run that. This is the Angels version. It has a key difference. But anyway, this is what we're going to do. Erica's flying out here to the gate into the site. And she is then going to bookmark it. And she's going to save it into a bookmark group called Us. Which is one I've created. It's nothing to do with a corp. It's just a little private group for me and the other okay. YouTube alts and a couple of the Amigas. Now here in the utilities section of the sidebar, you can set up an access list and you can create a group. We'll do a quick dummy one called uh, Them, I guess. That would be appropriate, wouldn't it? There we go. And then from there, you can either go into your people and places and add your acquaintances in from there, as I'm doing here. So no one's excellent standing with me. We'll let my son in. Yeah, Docking he can come in. Requested. So we'll just drag him over there. Alternatively, Docking request accepted. to save you the drag in, you can just click down here, add members, search for them, name, and add them into the access list that way. So there you go, we'll stick Fury in. The mouse I'm using is a little bit janky, so the dragging doesn't always work. It doesn't like dragging. So there you go, you get the principle. There are two ways of adding to the group. So I've got that group there called Us. So now I'm gonna to switch to Fin Trash in his Praxis. And this is the last minute. Oh, I'm gonna get that escalation done. It's a five out of 10. I've never tried one in a Praxis. Let's see what happens, Jobs. But well, that's how you share or set up the bookmark group. And then we're over on Fin Trash, so we don't need the Corp 1. There you go. There's the group. And open that. There's two duplicates because I'd already been and done this and messed up the recording of it. So I'm doing it again. Now down here, you will, when the first time you use it, you'll need to connect to this group. So you, you can disconnect if you want to stop, I guess, putting data into it or it being an option. But you do have to connect and then once you can you can just share all your bookmarks there between your alt your friends your mates whatever you want to do now here is the praxis about 180 mils worth i guess it is based on the one that i used to do conduits with that was hastily converted one night to go and do a bit of station bashing because i fitted uh torpedo launchers on it to do that and now i've stuck these heavy missile launchers on it they're the meta free ones they're not ridiculously expensive they give us a range of 47 kilometers uh, that's the key figure we need to know they're loaded with nova missiles because we're facing those nasty angels rats and explosive damage is what you want to hit them with anyway a multi-spectrum shield hardener not an adaptive and vulnerability field at all anymore in that first mid slot and then I've put the compact micro warp drive in to give us what speed we can possibly get. Right, then we've got a trio of Tech 2 large shield extenders just to give us a large amount of base hit points. We've got an explosive shield hardener, Tech 2 version there. We could have gone for a pair of explosive hardeners. I only had one handy, you know me, just to up that explosive resistance. I've gone for the target painter. That increases the signature radius of anything you're pointing it at. So our heavy missiles and the drones can hit things better. In the bottom slots, we've got three of the ballistic control system Tech 2s, two Tech 2 drone damage amplifiers, one upgraded coprocessor, because we need a bit of CPU boost for the fit, and a damage control 2. In the rigs, very simple. We've got three extenders. I haven't bothered putting an EM rig in there because I don't expect us to be taking any EM damage during the running of this site. Now, this is not optimized. There are options. I've never done this before. Passive regen is an option in any PVE build, but I don't know about that. Anyway, the drones is very simple. It's all about the explosive damage. So we've gone for the Republic Fleet Valkyries and the Tech 2 Warriors 
We've got some hobgoblins and hornets aboard as well, but we got two flights each of the drones we're going to be using, the Mimitar flavour, and if I, not even I can lose that many, I hope. So if we simulate the fit, you will see that gives us just over 100,000 EHP, just over 750 DPS. Not too worried about the capacitor life because we're not going to be burning the micro warp drive all the time, so that's not an issue. As long as you know what the build is doing, you don't need to worry about cap stability. And we've got 74% explosive resistance, and that's going to be quite helpful. Anyway, over to the good old trusty dependable Eve Uni combat site wiki page, the Angels Red Light District. So as we know, it's explosive damage we need to give and we need to uh, resist. First room, nothing too scary in there at all. Second room, we've got battle cruisers, we've got cruisers, we've got frigates. Frigates might get a bit nasty on the drone, so the heavy missiles are appropriate. We've got lots of big ships to kill on this site. Now, what is really different, we've got a couple of potential loot drops to look out for, but they're probably quite rare. It's this last room. Now, first of all, we've got to get rid of those three status towers, and then the big difference between this site and the Serpentis site is the loot is in a structure. So not even I can manage to kite uh, a shed out after me. So we're going to have to potentially kill a lot more on this site, especially in a big slow praxis, than we had to on the Serpentis site in a faster drake. Where once we've taken down those status towers, we could uh, walk back in, get the guy with the loot to kite out to us, take him out, grab the loot and run. I don't think that's going to be an option. So let's see how this goes. We're going in. Now the first two rooms on this site are just a matter of time and grinding them down to be honest with you. In low sec it's a real pain especially with an alpha skilled ship because it just takes that time and if people are messing with you as they did in that video. Although I had the measure of the second room I just didn't get left alone to clear it. Luckily I found that uh, third room that had, uh, had the path to it cleared for me in the very next system. So we're just going to settle down start targeting the ships. I've put the warriors out at this stage. I'm going to take down some of the cruisers that are closest and then the small ships, the frigates and the destroyers. They're also the ones that are going to do the most damage to my drones, especially the mediums once they're out. So if I clear them off the board as and when I can, the medium drones can then go out and set about the bigger ships. And it's just a standard PVE that I show you of keeping an eye on where you are in grid, being aware of where the mobs are, trying to be aware of any spawns on the site by looking at the wiki, not too relevant on this site, and controlling everything. If it all gets a bit too hectic on the incoming DPS, turn around and burn away with the micro warp drive. That's the only thing it's there for. Uh, the slow boating around in this ship is a bit of a pain. Uh, but uh, that's just what it is. It's a praxis. It's a big brick of a ship. Wonderfully versatile hull. I will do a video going into a bit more detail about it and uh, the Gnosis as well because they're obviously built to be fitted by any race using mixtures of armour and shield and any weapon system. Can be tweaked and tuned to various different roles. The Praxis can do this kind of stuff. It can do the emerging conduits as I've shown you. It can be just a brick tanked keep stuff on grid till the DPS arrives, bait ship, all kinds of stuff. As I said, I've even gone and bashed structures in it. For an alpha, it's probably the biggest ship you're ever going to need. And I think probably a better bet than any of the racial battleships with the way that the skill, skills are kind of capped and balanced. But we'll talk about that more another day. Anyway, I'm going to speed on right through this room. It is simply a matter of... Uh, keeping in control we're the ones in charge remember that's the basic principle and as you can see i am rotating my drones in and out they are taking a bit of a beating they will recharge their shield while they're back inside you um but just keep an eye i do lose one or two over the running of the site i'm really not that worried i've got two flights of each the dps on your drones will drop off once you've cleared all the smaller ships from a from a room so do that as and when you can, but just don't rush to do that. Just manage your drones. You can pull them in and out individually. You can pull them in and out as a flight. It's entirely up to you. It's always handy to have that window displaying what they're doing just so they are returning when you think you've asked them to return and they're not staying out there and getting killed because I've had that happen to me before. 
And do remember, as I've said, this fit is a kind of run what you brung starting point. We've got options. We could have fitted a missile guidance computer maybe to give us a bit more range and uh, maybe some better application for the heavy missiles. We could have uh, put on a couple of different modules or even rigs for the drones. Partly, it depends on your skills and your preferred style of play. The tweakage is down to you. Feel free to leave me a comment telling me uh, how you kind of would optimize this fit yourself. I might even try it if I find another 5 out of 10 to do. So bear in mind, this is that starting point fit. And uh, we'll work our way through. The drones have got a 40 kilometer control range and my missiles have got a 47 kilometer maximum range. So there's kind of a, a good-ish match there just to focus all your fire as much as possible. Unless you choose not to, you could have your missiles hitting the bigger ships, your drones taking on the frigates and the destroyers at one stage. Just play it as you want to do it, really. And I haven't only got the D-scan open out of habit. I am checking every now and again that there's no combat probes around. If somebody was just scanning down where I was on the site, I don't want them coming in in a much faster or more powerful ship. So if I see combat probes coming in on me, I'd just warp away just so they can't get a fix on where the site is. Maybe. It depends on where I am on the site, I guess. It's one of those low-sec habits that definitely has a role even here in high-sec. And that's the first room cleared, and by the time we get to the gate, we'll be pretty much fully recharged on the shield. I'll see you in the next room. And here, in fact, we are in the next room, fully recharged on the shield. I didn't rush. I went and made a cup of coffee. It took me seven minutes to get through the gate. <laughs> there you go. Such is life in a big fat praxis. What can I say? But this is, again, exactly the same stuff, guys. Um, no dramas here at all. I'm going to speed up the footage. In fact, I'm even going to cut a chunk out of this room because you've seen it all before. Uh, I do get a little bit low on shield. Let's get there, shall we? Basically, there's no way I'm going into the last room before I've gone back and done a repair and just sorted myself out a bit anyway. So I thought, what the heck? I've gone in. A little bit fast and furious, taking a lot more incoming DPS than you really had to. And I've overheated my resistance modules there. Remember your mid-slot modules, if you're not running the micro warp drive especially, will not overheat very quickly at all. They take ages, in fact you'll see later just how much overheating they can take. I've got level 4 thermodynamics trained. That is what mitigates the overheating of your modules and the damage they're taking. I suggest you train it. Especially if you're going to do any kind of PvP, because that's all about the overheating. So, now the DPS has dropped because we've killed most of what's on the board. The stress has all gone, we're going to start recharging on the shield, etc, etc. Now, on the basis of these first two rooms, you might think that upping the passive kind of shield regen would be a good move. Uh, I, as I say, I could have avoided dipping quite so low on hit points there. However, um, you know, sites vary room to room, so let's think about that kind of side of things after we've got through the last room. In fact, I'm going to cut ahead now. I'm going to clear the rest of this room. There's no stress, as you can see. I'm going to go and repair. We'll be ready to get into the last room because it took a very long time to run this site. I'm not going to lie to you. Getting around in this ship takes long enough, let alone killing this stuff. <laughs> so I'll tell you at the end how long this actually took. The timeline is obviously in the footage down in the bottom uh, left hand corner. But and I was on a, what did I have? Two hours, 53 minutes when I started the video left on the site timer. And that might start becoming a concern just to give you a clue. Now, before we go back into that last room, I have loaded up with Kaldari Navy Nova ammo just to up the DPS a little bit in the application. 10% more DPS in fact, but I've saved it for a special occasion and this is going to be one. Now, first of all, we've got to take down those three web towers. They're going to slow us down. We're big enough and slow enough anyway. We're going to take a lot of damage. We've got a lot of hit points, but there's going to be a lot of things trying to get them off of us. Plan is land in the room, take out those three web towers, anything else we can before we need to get out. And I expect to need to get in and get out of this room and take this in bite-sized chunks using what we've got. Now, to be honest, I could have gone and got um, one of my Omegas and come and done this in a rattlesnake, but it wouldn't have been much fun, to be honest with you, not compared to figuring it out with this. Not for me, anyway. 
So, as soon as we can, we're going to lock up the three Angel Status Towers. And we're going to start getting damage on those as soon as we can. The Target Painter is handy on towers because they can be tiny. I'm not putting the drones out. I don't want the extra management. I also preheated my resistance modules before I even switched them on. So they're going to be overheated the moment we've started off here. Get these three towers down and then see where we are. If we can stay on grid a little bit longer and get some more stuff down, then all the better. We've got plenty of stuff in and around 30 kilometers and within 30 kilometers, which is where they're going to be applying the most DPS to us. That's kind of where I like to keep things as a, a buffer. And they're coming in so that the DPS will mount up. We are moving so slowly. There's no point in firing the micro warp drive to try to counter it. It will just increase our signature radius even more. We're basically a bullet magnet. But we've taken the last status tower down. So we're, we're out of their grasp. And we're getting down to half shield. That's okay. We're going to stay on grid now and just see how much we can kill before we leave. That was always the plan. There's no way we're going to sit here and tank the site. Now my big concern is we've got to get in there and get the loot from a structure. I don't think we're going to be able to dive in there and get it. I don't even know if you could if you were in a Gila or a faster ship because you can't kite the guy out. Do let me know. But anyway, I think we're going to end up having to kill everything in this room. But we're now ready to rock. We're ready to roll. <laughs> I'm turning away. I'm burning the micro warp drive to pull range to reduce the incoming DPS. I'm just trying to kill one last guy, but I give up. So we're going to warp out. No drones to worry about. I didn't intend to put them out this first time. I'm surprised we stayed on grid this long. That's down to all those extra hit points that we've got over the drake. But no, it's time to uh, just go off, have a quick cup of tea and a sandwich. Come back and rejoin the fight. It's okay. This Praxis and I have been in hull many a time. We'll be back for stage two. This slow boat is taking about eight minutes to go and repair and get back to the gate to the last room. <laughs> so I'm glad nobody's been scanning me down on the site because they could have nicked it really easily. Anyway, here we go. Preheated on the resistance modules again so I can't forget. Let's see what we've got this time. My plan is to see... Well, it was to see if we could have a look at the loop. We have landed with so much close to us. Look, we've got battleships within 15 kilometers. We've got frigates all about us. We've landed in a really, really horrible spot here. This is going to be a lot of DPS very quickly. I am going to chuck out the drones. I'm going to, I've got to try and kill some of these ships that are here where I'm going to land. Because uh, they're going to be waiting for me each time I come back into the room otherwise. So let's just see what we can do here. I'm going to speed up the footage a bit now, guys, because uh, this does take a while, and I know you guys don't like me keeping you hanging on the videos for too long. I can see the analytics. Don't think I can't see what you're up to. So I'm primarying the battleships that are in close as much as possible. There are plenty of cruisers around as well, and little ships, So, but it's the battleships I want to get off of that warping point. Otherwise, they're just going to pour on the DPS every time I land. I did burn away with a micro warp drive a little bit to pull a bit of range. That is what it's there for, remember. Look at the drones. They are getting a bit hit. They're getting quite beaten up. That's by those frigates that are out there. So I'm going to call in the Valkyries. Keep them in for now. Again, we're in the same situation. I've just got everything overheated. The other issue I've got is your rack stays hot. The Warriors have gone back out to try and take down some of these frigates. I've now decided I'm going to take down all of the uh, frigates and destroyers that I can find on grid before I warp out. Then I know when I come back, it's really kind of just down to me to try to grind my way through the site. And the drones will be much, much safer. So I'm doing quite well on this run. Look how overheated everything is getting. As I was saying, sorry... The rack itself stays hot. That's the bar that you can see above the capacitor bar. It's still slightly red. And that accelerates the overheating. But anyway, I've walked out. We didn't get too battered there. But I achieved what I wanted to achieve. Now I'm going to see if we can possibly get anywhere near the structure with the loot in. 
I'm gonna again pre-overheated my resistance modules. I've not overheated the launches yet at all. There's been no need for that. It's been about staying alive rather than killing stuff so far. I don't want to risk burning them out anyway, not with my record. I'm going to try and burn in towards this uh, structure. I say burning in my praxis. And just see what happens. I'm not expecting this to work at all, but we'll give it a go. It might just happen, but you don't know till you try. But I am well aware this is possibly uh, an unnecessary step, but I, I am experimenting on your behalf. I'm managing to take down these battleships as I do it, which is good. Because uh, any DPS off the field is good DPS. As far as I'm concerned. They're not particularly tough. They're not particularly tanky. It's just that old situation on these sites. Of there being so many. It's the swarm that is going to get you. Some of those sentry towers have started locking me up. And putting in a bit of damage now. But there's nothing too horrible coming in now. It's all much much calmer. Until I get into about 40 kilometers out and then the damage starts coming in fast and furious. And I'm getting a little bit conscious about overheated everything is getting. But I'm going to take more of them down before I warp out, that's for sure. I've certainly given up on my run in. I've turned around and put in the other way. I'm aligned out to the station. It's all good. Just stay pre-aligned whenever it gets a little bit hairy. And then you just need to click warp. And as long as nothing weird has happened and you haven't got yourself in too close to a structure or an asteroid or anything odd like that, you're off as you will see. Do use the target painter, you know, on the cruisers, on the towers and everything. It does make a difference to the application with the heavy missiles. You really can see that. And with that bite-sized chunk well bitten, we're going to go off, cool off the uh, modules, wrap up. We don't really need to wrap up, do we? We didn't even get into armor there. Look how conservatively I'm playing. Anyway, back into that third and final room. And, uh, well, I think we could say we've got the measure of this now. It's just us and the towers. And this is actually where I do play with the target painter on the towers and the missiles. And I... Just, yeah, it does make a considerable difference to the application of the damage and to how many salvos and missiles need to hit it. And it's worth when you've got the time when you're playing on sites, do fiddle about with stuff and try it out. New Eden is a lab and you're the mad professor. So yeah, have a tinker, poke things, see what happens. So there we are, we're just burning down this loot box now. Let's see what we got for our trouble. Now this has taken me two and a half hours I was getting a little bit conscious of the site timer because it would just despawn around you. The timer isn't until you get the site started or anything. And we've done it and we'll get into this loot box in our own good time, won't we, Mr. Praxis? We'll get some epic screenshots while we're doing it. We'll get the drones in. I think we lost two on the site. We've got the base loot of about 43, 44 million, but you know what? I was never in it for the money and Eve Karma is Eve Karma. I ran this site the day that I killed that 650mm Mackinac that dropped 450 mils worth of ore lasers. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. I'm more than happy. But the point is, I've had two and a half hours of very uh, busy, intense, having fun playing Eve with my Praxis. And we got into Hull again, but he never lets me down. I'm bookmarking some wrecks, just in case the site does collapse. I can still get up here and salvage. Although I'm not going to salvage. I'm going to drop some info in local and see if anyone wants to come up here and salvage the wrecks. It's very late and I want to go to bed. But the Praxis and I, off the cuff, have done the 5 out of 10. And I hope, again, this is just supposed to be a bit of an example of it isn't always about having the min-maxed fit. I've seen people miss sights or miss fights because they are faffing over their fit and by the time they get there in their optimized fit someone's already run the site or the f battle's already been won and lost etc etc so i do encourage you not to be too too fussy about what you fly get to know how the ships work and you'll know what you're getting yourself in for it's very hard to lose a ship on these sites if you don't plow in and just go a little bit mad. 
Remember, you're the one who takes the initiative on these sites. The rats aren't too bright. We could have got some very nice loot, but not this time. I've heard of these sites dropping hundreds of millions. Let me know, guys. Leave me a comment. What's the most loot you've ever got off a 5 out of 10? What's your favourite ship for doing it in? If you do it in a Praxis share, you fit with me. Either in a comment, in the Discord, if you want to drop in there and share your fit with the other guys. That'd be cool. But we're going to do one final giveaway. This is our final kind of celebratory episode. Again, it's more about just the spirit of getting in and getting a site done than anything scientific about a fit optimization or a tutorial on a site or a situation. And I think to bring it up to around billion that we'll have given away altogether, we're going to do it a bit differently. I'm going to get two of you very happy because two of you are going to get 250 million each. So if you add the three giveaways together, that's going to be a cool billion. And you know I've earned it. So um, I can only share the love and the good karma. So again, I need you to be a sub. I need you to leave me a comment of what you would do with your quarter of a billion windfall. How you would invest it, how you would have fun with it. Then you also absolutely must send a message in game to this alt, the one in this video, Fintrash, to, to say I've left a, left a comment under this username. So I know before I announce a winner, the name of the alt that's going to get the money. That's very important, especially for this much money. Make sure you do those three things. I will pick two of you based on uh, how much your comment has made me smile or impressed me or made me think. And my decision shall be final. And I shall do that by the end. I'm going to leave that one running for a while. So I'm going to leave that run until next Saturday. Which is going to be the 8th of August. That sounds about right. So I shall send the money out then. That's all you have to do. I'm leaving the guy that I found in local. After a couple of posts in the chat. To salvage to his heart's content. I've abandoned all the wrecks. They're all his. So I hope he made a nice bit of money out of that himself. I was way too tired having run that site in my mighty praxis to come back and salvage myself. So if you are going to leave a site unsalvaged, you know, do think about just saying in local, do you want it? Nine times out of ten, they'll think it's some kind of trap and won't talk to you anyway, but that's their loss. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave you in peace now. I'll be back very soon. I'm going to try some kind of short, snappy vids of this is a fit, this is a site. Any requests, anything you want me to look at, please leave me a comment. You know I like some input and I like a bit of guidance from you guys. Subscribe if you want to stay in touch. Like it if you've liked it. But for now, remember, even if it's believing, fly safe, fly brave. Take care of yourselves and each other. And for now, goodbye. Rubbish loot from these wrecks, by the way. Don't even bother. A couple of useful bits, but most of it's just junk, to be honest.